Welcome to this video where we're going to be looking through my process in making uh, a couple of 3D environments in Blender and getting some nice renders out of them. One of the environments is going to be this outdoorsy environment with the tire in it and then one's going to be this indoor scene with a teapot in it. The outdoor one is much more complex so I'm going to be focusing on this one mostly and some of my scattering workflows and yeah how I, how I approach this. So for these renders I wanted to focus on practicing my lighting and composition skills and not my modeling or shading skills really. So what I did was collate some assets from Polyhaven. You could make these yourself but you know I didn't want to invest that much time. I wasn't sure exactly what kind of scenes I wanted to use so it was much quicker for me to just grab some stuff online and start playing with how I wanted to put stuff together and the kind of mood I was going for there. So I just brought in some sort of a weed type assets, some grass, and this barrel that I wanted to use initially. But what I've really learned from this process is to not overload your scene with tons and tons of assets. Because they are really cool assets, it can be tempting just to download everything. But really, you know, simplicity is key in this kind of workflow. So for here, for example, in this teapot scene, it initially started out with ornaments and cameras and baseballs and uh, clocks and all sorts of things. But I initially decided to just simplify it down to just tea, a tea set on a table. Um, it made a lot more sense, it was very clear to the viewer what was going on, and it's just easier to focus on one asset at a time. Trying to balance the composition between you know, a dozen assets is, is almost impossible. So at this stage I sort of think of as my rough block out stage where I really just try and define where the camera's going to be, the, the focal asset that I'm going to use in the scene. In this case it's going to be the tyre or the teapot. And I start looking at adding in the basic floor plane, uh, or if this is an interior scene, I add in uh, the room, start to give it some nice natural variation in shape, uh, all working mostly to camera, but also checking stuff out in 3D to make sure that it, it still roughly makes sense and uh, isn't completely all cheated. But you know, you can cheat at this stage, it's not a big deal. Um, if you're only going to be rendering this from one perspective, you may as well just try and get it to look as good as possible from that perspective. And then what I like to do is just sort of not worry about any of the scattering or the grass or anything just yet because that can that's all quite fine detailed stuff. I just focus on the broad strokes. So things like tree placement is what I'm going to be spending most of my time on in this stage. For the teapot scene here, the broad strokes are a lot simpler. It's really just figuring out where I want to place the teapot, the um, position of the window and the camera, and that's really about it. Sometimes what I like to do in these outdoor scenes to layer up the depth is add in another um, sort of floor plane behind the primary one. And you can make this a bit lower poly if you need to, but it's just nice to make it a bit contrasting in with what you have in the foreground. So now that I've got my rough blocking in place and I'm happy with how the, all these trees are placed uh, and the floor plane, all my broad shapes are sort of there. I just need to start looking at the finer detail stuff now. So. The main part of this scene was really the grass, and that's quite a fine detail element, so I brought in some assets for that. And initially I brought in this little pack, and I tried scattering this on my plane, just with this little scatter node group I made a while ago. And I wasn't really happy with how it was coming out, it was coming out quite uniform, um, quite tall as well, there wasn't much variation in the height, and no matter how much I sort of played with the settings, I couldn't quite get it looking right, so I decided to bring in another asset. This one worked much better, it had much. It was much lower to the ground, uh, it looked much more natural and a bit more rough as well. Uh, it was just a little too green so I just dropped the saturation on there a little bit. And then yeah, I just tried to paint in some nice patches in the foreground here by where our focus uh, subject was. And when I paint where grass grows, I, I sort of think about how it might grow naturally in real life, so it might grow, you know, more in the, sh the shade and that kind of thing, so, you know, you can sort of play with that a little bit. Um, the next step for me was to add a material to this floor plane, so what I decided to do was uh, grab this PBR texture, uh, 8K resolution, and the reason I went for 8K was because I wanted to physically displace the geometry in the foreground, so you got a lot of detail of sort of little rocks and bits of mud. Um, and I obviously didn't want to model all that, so using this displacement map with a really high resolution gives you all that detail for free, so it's it's a really nice, really quick way of doing that. Uh, the only downside is it's very um, geometry dense, so what I did was separate out this sort of extreme foreground element into its own um, object, 
uh, deleted everything that wasn't visible to camera and just gave that a subdivision modifier set to six. So it really is very dense doing it this way, but it adds a lot of realism to your scene in the foreground. The problem I was having now was it looked a little weird, the fact that the mud was underneath the grass. Um, that didn't look quite right to me, so I, I grabbed another uh, grass PBR texture, lower resolution this time because I didn't need any um, crazy displacement or anything, it's more like a background thing. So I just grabbed this texture, set it up in the same node tree, added a mix shader node and a mix vector node to, the, to um, switch between the displacement as well. And then I just used a vertex mask to mix between them. And that way I could paint out where I wanted the mud and where I wanted the grass. I also, you know, refined the camera position a little bit at this stage just to work better with the grass and the new assets I brought in. So, you know, you can do that at any stage really, but just try not to move it too far from your initial sort of idea. I also brought in some dandelion assets, which is just sort of these like weed-like assets that help add a, a few splashes of colour to the grass, a bit of natural variation. It just makes the whole scene look a bit more rough and it just, it matched the uh, mood quite well. So I tweaked everything quite a bit until I found something that I was happy with. And once I had the sort of composition locked down, I decided to start lighting this. And now my process for lighting this was to first of all turn the world light back on and set it to black. Just so I can focus on light direction for a minute, I added in a single directional light and just sort of started rotating it around at a high intensity just to see what sort of shadows um, caught my eye and what looked good. I ended up thinking that it would be nice to sort of have the the focus element here more in shadow and keep the background lighter to create that contrast. So you know you can definitely use shadows to your advantage, you don't always have to light your focus element, you can sometimes keep it in shadow and that will be just as effective. Once I was pretty happy with the light direction I decided to add in the default forest HDR which comes with Blender, um, I just grabbed it from my Blender install folder and rotated it around to sort of match the light direction a little bit and give me that nice fill light. But you can see I tried to keep things fairly simple, I don't go ahead and add loads of lights in, I really just try and focus on my directional light and my fill light. In this case the fill light is the HDR and the directional light is the sun. And in both of these scenes, even though they're quite different, one's interior, one's exterior, I'm still working through the same process and just trying to find some nice values in the image. Once I find something that I think overall works, I start adding colour to the light, so I might tint the key light a little bit more yellow, and in some cases I'll tint the HDR to be a bit more blue. I'm now at the point where I can also turn the depth of field back on and set the focus element to be the tyre. Another thing I like to do to sort of level up the lighting a little bit is when lighting things where trees are around, I use these, um, try to use shadows to my advantage. So I'll either use actual tree assets to cast shadows onto the subject. So here in this tea, tea scene, I grabbed a tree um, outside the window and tried to position it in a way that it casts some nice shadows onto the teapot here. Um, it could be useful in this case to set the angle of the directional light to zero so you get perfectly hard shadows. You can see um, exactly what, what your tree's doing and then turn the softness back up a little bit after the fact. I do the same thing in this tire scene. But for the background, I actually use this plane with a noise texture plugged into the alpha, which is sort of a cheaper way of doing this. It gives the impression of leaves from far away and um, yeah, it can be a pretty nice technique to use whenever you're doing outdoorsy type stuff. At some point when I was lighting this, I wasn't too happy with how this barrel was looking as well, so I thought it might make more sense if I just replaced it with the stack of tires. It's the same sort of shape, same composition, just different assets. So, you know, it just shows that still sometimes at, at this end stage, I might go back to an earlier part and change something up. But, you know, that's broadly speaking pretty much all the stages that I go through when I'm making my environments and, and doing some renders of them. There's obviously a lot that goes into this, there's a lot of tweaking that you don't see, and um, I've also in this scene just like added in some um, cards of trees like in the background just to help out as well. But you know you just really have to be patient with it, spend a few hours on it and hopefully you'll come out with a nice render.